Yes, that's one of those things where you always say to yourself, uh, how are we going to prepare in the event of an outage? And now we know. We just kind of sit here and try and figure it out. In case you're wondering, we are live. So uh, I will jump on the Facebook page, Bjorn, if you want to talk for a minute and make sure everyone gets that we're on a different link. Certainly. Okay. Uh, go for it. Certainly. So um, uh, here, not me then. Oh, to everybody else? Yeah, you're on. Excellent. Well, yes, we are in fact live, ladies and gentlemen. How about it? Uh, as I was saying, we're talking about the Festival of Floralia. And that started um, in Rome sometime, we think, 240, 238 before the Common Era. And we're not entirely certain, but let's be honest, for Rome, that's pretty good, pretty good numbers there. And it's when the Temple to Flora was dedicated. And the goddess was uh, Flora is talking about protecting uh, blossoms and flowers and all the beautiful crawling vines that uh, were in the uh, Republic. And uh, this festival was one that talked about regrowth and renewal and and the celebrations. And although it did in fact start on April 28th, because the festival went through until the beginning portions of of May. Uh, we believe that the um, Floralia celebration in Rome is really what started uh, May Day celebrations in Western Europe. Now, there are other celebrations in other parts of the world. There are celebrations in um, Africa. There are celebrations that we have um, in some of the colder portions of Scandinavia. There are celebrations in the Indian subcontinent and, of course, in Asia. But because so much of what started the SCA, which 56 years old, just a couple of days ago, um, it started on a May Day celebration. We thought it would be nice to kind of harken back to some of the things that got the game started in 1966 in Berkeley, California. So that's the first website that we're going to talk about. And the second one is a brief history of the Maypole dance. Now, Maypoles have had all kinds of symbolism attached to them, whether they are about fertility or finding a mate or just we're going to have a good harvest. It really depends upon what part of Germany or what part of Scandinavia or what part of uh, the, the British Isles that you're a part of. And uh, while the belief started that giant trees would be stripped of all of their bark stripped of all of their foliage, and then they would be wrapped with colorful vines. You know, now that I think about it, that sounds like that would probably kill the tree. But, you know, what are you going to do? It was ancient times. Um, but at any rate, these rituals that started uh, with and then ended with a bonfire later that night, um, whether or not there was debauchery, uh, which some of the things... Uh, they they talk about that. You notice that's usually done by um, the Victorian writers that talk about debauchery. It's the same thing that they did, just with less ruffles. But at any rate, so the Maypole celebration is really one of the things that encapsulates the springtime experience for the Europeans. And it's something that we in our own ways, have had on events for the past 56 years. As a matter of fact, there's probably been a Maypole uh, at, at some event somewhere every year since the very beginning. And it's just one of those things that it may or may not even be a medieval thing, but we still have it as part of our traditions, part of our society traditions. And, you know, those are things that now that we've been around 56 years, we're, you know, we're technically an antique now. So we, we can go ahead and have those. But those are the two things we're talking about this week. And uh, one last thing I wanted to mention about Bardic War is that uh, is those of you that get a chance to go to the website that Laertes has talked about, or those of you that, that look at the Facebook page, see what things you might want to do from the 15th to the 23rd. That is a very long time that these folks have put so much effort together. See if there's things that you could help with, volunteer, or just come and take a part because it is, it's really fascinating what they're getting together. So at any rate, that's Arts and Sciences this week.
Ah. And we're still worried. That's the great thing about a live show, honestly. <laughs> is, is that one never knows what's going to happen next. Uh, wow. It's like we're like a smooth running machine, aren't we? It's, uh, as as was said in the great movie up uh, down Periscope, we're we're running like a Swiss car. So I uh, just so you know, for those that are watching in other kingdoms, I had to put I had to put no new posts out for all the other places. So I apologize for being a little bit late to the party. Uh, a couple of quick things before we go to our first interview is, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so the Maypole, uh, the 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 College of Voyagers used to have it here for the Maypole event here in Kaid, and my wife and I took it home one year, and we had a child nine months later. And uh, I hope the people that got the maypole after us disinfected it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and the second, the second thing is, for our guests this week, uh, we have someone from the most recent or newest kingdom and from the newest principality. Did you notice that? I did, by strange coincidence. Uh, how fortuitous. I know, and uh, what I was going to say is uh, I went to 50th, 50th anniversary of the SCA that was held during our 51st year, um, and uh, they had a hall that all the kingdoms had their historical relics, you know, over the past years and such. And um, so, you know, we went to the West, and they had all of their stuff. We went to like Kaid and there's a whole area of stuff. Went to Avacol and they had a painted rock. It was really nice that all the, okay, well, no. Um, but it, it was interesting to see all the venerable stuff from the other kingdoms that was kind of beat up and rusty and free on cans. But Avacol had like, everything was bright and shiny and new and well fabricated and stuff. It's like, uh, you could you could see the journey of fabrication. Um, uh, from over those 50 years. So anyway, I just wanted to share that and see how many people in Africa like it upset. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, who, who do we have up first today? We have Sir Vincente da Murano, who is from, I'm going to give it a shot, the incipient principality of Windheim. I think that's how it's said, but I'm sure he will correct me if I'm wrong. All right, well, let's uh, bring him, because I've, I've never been in a kingdom. Well, we'll save it for him here. We'll go. So, and uh, if this doesn't drop us again, he'll be here right about now. Hello. Well, hello. Well, thank so, you. Most of us pronounce it as Vindheim, although I've been told by heraldry type people that they're like, no, it's supposed to be Vindheim. But. Okay. They haven't got us to conform yet. So we'll see well, who wins that battle in the coming years. Well, the, the main thing for me is I get corrected at the end of each show by people texting me. So um, uh, I'm just going to say they don't know, so don't blame me. Um, well, hello. Uh, so where are you? Where is the principality of Vindheim? So Vindheim <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is Oklahoma along with the panhandle of Texas mm -hmm. and, and stretching on down to uh, Wichita Falls, which is down south of Lawton. Uh, so it covers a pretty good size area. there. Right, and it, it's, it's, it's been, it, it is a part of what kingdom? Uh, part of Ons Dior. Right. Uh, I have gold stars or black and gold up here for, for uh, Ons Dior. Yeah. Uh, Nothing like branding for good marketing. Yeah. Um, so, um, kind of, kind of. Good. So, uh, let's talk about you for a minute. So, how long have you? Uh, well, before we even get into the principality part, so how long have you been in the SCA? Let's see. Since two thousand eight, uh, started playing uh, at. Uh, there's a medieval fair that's hosted by the University of Oklahoma in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, Namron called medieval, called medieval fair. Uh, so uh, I started playing there at the uh, for the for the OU, and then after a few years of that, decided, hey, I'd like to do some more of this. So my wife and I, uh, and a couple of friends, decided to start playing in this group over there called the 
SCA. And so we started doing that and got more and more involved and been playing ever since. Cool. And um, so, and how long have you been involved in this process to establish a principality on the northern part of the kingdom? I started hearing about it shortly after I joined. Uh, and it's been kind of an off and on thing. Uh, I've tracked it back to about 1985 that it was being talked about, um, but it never really gained traction and got going in an organized uh, manner. Um, and then just within the last uh, few years, it's really gotten organized and coalesced into a, a concrete uh, group and actually gotten all the paperwork done and all the heraldry done and everything else to create one. All right. Well, you know, I, I reached out to some of my friends in Onsdiora because I, I when, when it was announced that they were creating an incipient principality, and why is it incipient at the moment? Well, we don't have a coronet yet. Right. Uh, until we actually have a coronet tourney and somebody becomes the the prince and princess of the principality, it has to remain as in Sydney. I guess that's better than in utero. Right? Um, so um, I, I've never been in a kingdom where, which had basically split off a principality and gone through the process and, and such. So I, I, I asked who to talk to who might have been involved you know, o over time and such. That would be a good resource. And, that, and that's why we reached out to you because I don't know how it happens. Um, so is it is it more like a uh, like a grassroots movement? People kind of start talking about it and organizing to start the process, or how did it happen for you guys? It's it's really been a grassroots, and it's really been something that has evolved and grown uh, through the years as people have talked about it. But to clarify one thing, we haven't broken off from Monsieur. Right. Right, right. Uh, I, I missed both. Yeah. The, the principality is still a part of Anstior, um, and our our crown will still be the Anstiorn crown, mm -hmm. uh, and then this will be a group within Anstior, the principality. Um, but it started as a, a grassroots and just continued to grow and get more support and more momentum uh, as the kingdom has grown and in membership and in in differences i guess uh not as far as like negative differences but uh kind of cultural differences in a way uh, between the north and the south uh, i'm not sure if people understand how big the kingdom is um but if you start at the southern tip of texas and start driving north you'll get halfway to Canada uh, as you're leaving Texas. So it really covers a large area. And then you've got to go through the Oklahoma Panhandle uh, after you've gotten halfway to Canada. So it, it covers a wide area north and south and east and west. Um, and it will help with the travel, uh, the burden of travel and stuff for some people that aren't able to travel as much. Right. And um, got, actually, I'm going to skip ahead because this is a good question. We had a question. What, what, what's the advantage of a principality over just baronies and shires in that fashion? Well, the advantage is that also the, the coronet can serve as the, um, the voice of the crown uh, when the crown allows it so that uh, the crown doesn't always have to travel to the north to give out awards or to hold courts. Uh, the, the king and queen can uh, grant permission to the coronet to be able to do a lot of those duties for them. Uh, and it gives them a, a little bit stronger base within that region, uh, or in this case, the principality, to uh, have more things done without necessarily the king and queen having to be present all the time. So it, it can help the king and queen uh, it allows the the region to grow into more of a 
a coalesced unit and a, a group so that they're able to distinguish themselves and gain more of their own identity as they continue to grow. Okay. Um, so, it, you know, if it started, you know, kind of more in earnest the last few years, what, what, what was what was the process that got you to petitioning the Crown and the board uh, to actually make this thing happen? When, how, how did that go? Uh, very, very long and laborsome. Uh, <laughs> There, it is quite a process. Uh, you have to have all of the zip codes listed. Uh, you have to have uh, enough memberships. They want to. You have to have um, members of every peerage, members of the royal family, uh, members of uh, all the different groups and and stuff uh, represented uh, before you can move forward. Then you have to show that you've been able to grow and prosper as a uh, region and that you've been able to have uh, officers uh, fulfilling all the duties uh, throughout the region for the kingdom. So it takes quite a process to get all that stuff put together and you have to uh, have a group that gets together and says, okay, what are we gonna do for our arms? You know, what are we gonna create? How are we going to do this? What are we going to have for the name? So there's a lot of committee meetings and a lot of uh, online discussions. We had a lot of meetings at events back when we used to have them. And hmm. then uh, discussed it and voted and did a lot of polling and everything to come up with the device, the name and stuff. Then you get all that uh, put together and submitted to the College of Heralds to get it approved. And once all that was approved, and then all of the uh, financial laws, all of the uh, laws, just as if you're a kingdom, uh, have to be written up and put that all into one big package and send to the board of directors. And then they get to go to their committee meeting and review everything. And then they get they review all the numbers and they check the numbers for the kingdom. And they say, okay, assuming we assuming the Prince Pally, you know, assuming we formed this and it was a kingdom today, would the remaining kingdom still be a kingdom? Would it still be okay? Mm -hmm. And so if they decide everything would still work, then they can decide to go ahead and grant the petition to make a Prince Pally. So I, I, you, you, you touched on it. So y'all had like little meetings and gatherings in the different baronies and areas in the northern part of the kingdom that would become the principality to see what their support was and seek their input and document it and such. Were there conversations held with areas in the southern part of the kingdom just to see how it was uh, being received by the people, uh, by the portions that would not be part of the principality? There were meetings held uh, not only at some of the local events, but also at some of the kingdom events, uh, they they would have meetings and get togethers, uh, you know, go off to the side and have a, uh, a town hall meeting or whatever you'd like to call it, uh, normally in the shade, uh, to discuss what was happening, what the process was, and why it's being thought of. Uh, so yeah, it, it was discussed throughout the kingdom, both in person, um, and online, uh, in Facebook, uh, email. So there was quite a few things. Okay. So, um, so you mentioned the name. So what, what does the name translate to? I mean, what does it, does it mean like tornado alley? Cause it's looking at the places <laughs> you'll click, that would make sense. It would. And there had been a lot of names that were discussed, uh, uh, anywhere from Red Earth to uh, Tornado Alley. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it, it, people put in things for um, Home of the Wind uh, type thing, and, and a lot of things. Vindheim, uh, the translation. Uh, oh, okay, well, well. You stumped me for a second. 
Home of the Wind. I'll think on it. I'll remember it here shortly. I was uh, just curious. I, I'm sure there's some meeting. Yes, there is. Uh, and I can't yeah. think of it. Yeah, I was going to say, is it Home of, home of the Wind? Or as uh, Selene says, Wind Home? Uh, don't ask me. I'm not a herald. Yeah. I'll, all the pressure's on Bjorn, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Um, so now that, that uh, the creation of the principality has been, oh, someone's giving you notes, I can see. Uh, the creation of the principality uh, has been approved and is moving forward. What is your, what's the plan for uh, uh, the, the tournament to determine the, the, the next, the first set of rulers? And I'm sure there's a lot of regalia and, and such that need to be uh, in process to get you there. So what's the goal? Well, we had a we had a committee that uh, put together a list of things that would be needed for regalia, and then uh, they did a process of um, having people submit ideas and suggestions for the coronets, for thrones, for kneeling pillows, for a lot of different things, and then uh, each of those each person or team submitted. Uh, drawings and specifications of what they would do for that item and then the committee said okay they then awarded you know the, the sort of state um, to uh, one group or to one team uh, mm -hmm. the chairs uh, the pillows and all those types of things to different groups uh, throughout the region uh, so that a lot of people are working on the regalia, not just not just one person, team, or bearing. Um, and then the the attorney, as part of the as part of the uh, process of submitting a packet to the Bob, one of the things you have to put in there is exactly when your attorney is going to be. So uh, our attorney's already been scheduled for December the tenth. Mm -hmm. I believe it is that's the second. Saturday of uh, December. Um, so that will be our first coronet turning. And on that day, then that'll be when uh, the Principality of Bendheim will actually become, uh, oh, the 11th. Just got told off camera. Uh, the 11th. Uh, that'll be the day when the Principality or the, the incipient Principality of Bendheim becomes the Principality of Bendheim. Uh, so that'll be that. And it is. Land of the wind. Land of the wind. Very nice. It makes sense. I can't if, it was, if it was home or whatever, so it was like, uh, I don't want to say it wrong, so I'll just say I don't know for a little bit. Well, 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 my favorite thing is when you're driving up 35 and you get over the Red River, about 10 miles in, you get signs that say, do not drive into the fog, which is like, it sounds Lovecraftian for me. Like there's monsters waiting for you. <laughs> Fog. Some of my favorite signs. Um, it can get really dense at times, uh, and all of a sudden it just, <laughs> all of a sudden it can just kind of become all white, and you're like, oh no. And if you're still driving 75 miles an hour, that can become real dangerous. So I, I have a couple more, and then it's, uh, I'll turn it over to Bjorn, which will have better questions. And actually, I'm not even going to ask questions. I'm going to have questions from uh, the audience. There's one here from some guy named Nico. Uh, how independent dependent is a principality on their host kingdom? A uh, dependent or independent? Yes. He couldn't make up his mind. <laughs> okay. He, he's my student, so I can give him a hard time. Okay. Yes, sir, I was say. Good question. So he, he's he's special, like you. <laughs> he's my little buckaroo. The, the principality is still dependent on the kingdom. Uh, and the the coronet has authority. Uh, they'll be able to create some awards, uh, primarily non religious awards that they'll be able to give. Uh, they'll also be able to create some principality awards that are midgeous, but they will only be able to give those with consent of the crown. Uh, and so they'll have to do. They they are dependent in the sense that they don't have the ability to just go out and start doing whatever they want. They are independent in the sense that they can start holding events, principality events. Uh, they can start making plans for if and when they become a kingdom. 
uh, they're able to uh, create and have their own bank account and start uh, doing those types of things and have, you know, getting outfitted with uh, tents and different things. Uh, but they do have, they are still dependent on the kingdom. Uh, so when we go to Gulf War next year, on Stewart we'll have a principality, but the principality is still going to be camping with Anstior and still going to be fighting with Anstior. Right. Well, uh, um, and then the other question is, so for, for the Cornet tournament that's coming up, if I lived in Steps, which would not be part of the Principality, I could still fight in the tournament? No. Okay. So uh, it's only for within the lands. You must be with, you must be a member, or you, yeah, you must be a member and you must be a resident of the Principality to be able to fight in. And you still have to have some service requirement and some activity requirement uh, because it's, it's supposed to be somebody actually from in uh, okay. it's fighting in the tourney okay. and we also have the same restriction as far as the consul uh, also has to have the same restrictions okay. uh, not every kingdom does it this way but non stiora the king and queen are equal mm -hmm. Um, so it's not the king and then the queen. They're right here equal, uh, and the coronet will basically be the same way. That's great, as it, as it should be. Um, my last question is actually from Con Contessa Batista, and she asks, so is the goal to eventually become your own kingdom? I mean, it seems a little early to ask that question, but I'll ask. Uh, eventually, yes. Uh, that's my personal goal, uh, and my my hopes are that one day it will become a kingdom, but it's not ready to become a kingdom today. Uh, it needs some structure. It needs uh, some of its own history, uh, its own organization. Um, so it's got some it's got some work it needs to do between now and then, uh, and that'll be another process uh, that'll have to be submitted to the bot as well. Right. And, uh, so that's that's still at least a few years out. And it's a little bit more rigorous process to go from a principality to a kingdom. There's more requirements or how, how, is there a bigger I, base of people or do we know? I, I don't know. The the requirements as far as the number of people, uh, I can't tell you what the numbers are, but Vindheim already has enough uh, members to be a kingdom. Oh, wow. It's, it's had enough members. It's had enough members in the north in the northern region to be a kingdom for a number of years. That's fantastic. It just had never actually done the process to become principality. So uh, it won't be, you know, unless we start losing members, uh, we won't have to worry about it. That's fantastic. I mean, I, I, it sounds like a very exciting time. I mean, having spent my formative years uh, in Onstiora. Uh, it really just sounds like an amazing thing to happen and watch and be part of. I, it's so cool. Uh, I'm going to step away now and uh, let Bjorn ask questions. I'll be back. So uh, one of the things also as a, as a native Anstiorn um, that I was going to ask is once Vindheim or Vindheim, I'm, I'm a Laurel, so I'll go ahead and say Vindheim. <laughs> So once Vinheim is its own principality, do you think that's going to cause Anstior proper to like try and reclaim some of its own by taking Hudspeth and El Paso back from the Outlands? Or are they, they going to go ahead and let, let all those folks out there uh, uh, stay, stay with the Outlands? Um, I haven't heard anything like that. I, <laughs> I think they'll stay where they are. Uh, there's still... I mean, the, the numbers are there right now for two kingdoms and have been for years. Uh, now, we have lost some during the pandemic uh, cause, because prior to that, there was enough for three kingdoms um, as far as the numbers go. Uh, but no, that'll, that'll just stay there. And I think in a way, it'll help Anstior be able to grow and uh, build up those areas more because when you have a crown from down in Houston and they're trying to get to 
all the different groups throughout the kingdom and all the to the regions and stuff it becomes a, a great deal of travel uh, to be able to drive from Houston up to Oklahoma City uh, or to Tulsa uh, for a weekend so it, it's quite a challenge for them uh, so I think in a way it, it may help them as well because we've had the same problem when we have a crown here which if you turn cheat here for a second if you turn you'll see that kingdom court is still set up <laughs> because um, uh, as it turns out uh, my wife is the the queen of Von Steuer, a good friend of ours Jason fights for her um, because of the time when he started fighting for her, uh, I was uh, mostly a scrub uh, on fighting I did a lot of shield wall, uh, but I did not do a lot of tourney or uh, fighting like that. It wasn't until uh, later I started doing more of that and, and then progressed and got knighted. So he won crown January of, uh, what is it? January of 2020. Yeah, January of 2020. And uh, then they stepped up in about a year ago, so we've had we've had uh, court set up in our living room now for the last year. <laughs> so, um, uh, one of the things that, that I wanted to ask because I'm I mean, where I'm from is what would is what Vindheim would be, um, and so the the baronies of Vindheim would be Eldrin Hills, Namron. Wiesenfeuer and Northkeep. Is that correct? That would be the Baronies, yes. Okay, so those are the Baronies, are the big, the big monster uh, locations. And um, well, no, one of the big monster locations is Moonshadow. Okay, okay. Um, so Which that's is a province. Oklahoma State out that way. Oklahoma State, Stillwater. Okay. Uh, okay. The province of Moonshadow. Okay. Uh, oh, the province. That, that's yeah. I, that would make sense. But no, I, I, I too understand uh, the concept of, of, of travel. One of the things about Kaid is that it is not geographically large, but it is very dense as far as population. And just the natural congestion of Southern California makes it a challenge to, to travel from one place to another. But having lived in Meridies before Glen Avon became its own principality and then kingdom, I can tell you when you're going from Smith Keep, which is Fort Smith, Arkansas, and then you go to an event in uh, what is Pensacola, Florida, um, uh, that and that's all in the same kingdom. It's uh, it it definitely is a challenge, and um, I think one of the things that that Vinheim's has going for it is as at least if we if we don't get the stuff back from the Outlands, you'll still be in one time zone, so that's nice. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> even in Kaid, we have Hawaii. So, so when they're coming to visit, they do have a tendency to um to oh, there we go. Oh, look at this. That's pretty. That is quite lovely. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, so even we, in our little own way, have to deal with some of the time zone issues uh, that that y'all probably won't have to. But I I recall that that was an issue when you're in Arkansas or you were in, uh, in Mississippi and, and the like, and then having to travel anything past Alabama, um, you you were going to switch time zones. And uh, one of the things that, that people have asked me here to ask you is, um, Kaid is a kingdom that has a lot of day events, but not many weekend events. Is Anstior and Will Windheim be uh, more of a weekend event oriented kind of thing once we're able to start doing that again? Uh, we're primarily a weekend type event. Uh, we normally would go to an event and get there uh, Friday evening, set up camp and stuff, uh, and then be able to have a chance Friday evening to be able to visit with a lot of people, um, maybe have a drink, uh, walk around, enjoy fire, uh, then Saturday would be there all day, and then 
there's normally like a court Saturday evening. And then after that, there'd be uh, a lot of times it's either hopla or there might be um, uh, some other type of competition as far as some Middle Eastern dance competitions or something uh, Saturday evening. And the, uh, the visiting and the activities normally go on until after midnight and sometimes much later. And then Sunday morning, you know, when you finally wake up, you get up and you get ready and roll back out. But it's a it's a more of a weekend type thing uh, for a lot of it. Now, that's fantastic. The, the last coronation I went to in Anstiora was actually, I don't know if it was the last one. Well, it can't be. I'm sure they've had it several times sent there since. But was it the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Wiesenfeuer in the main dining area? Because it, it it holds for folks that have never been to something like that, where you have five or six hundred folks all in one giant dining room, and there's a dais kind of in the center where the 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 crown uh, where the thrones are. It's truly a unique experience, and uh, I've been to some pretty good sized uh, coronations in my life, but I think that one that I was at. Uh, at, at the Cowboy Hall of Fame's main dining area is probably the biggest coronation I've ever been to. And of course, Hans Diora, you know. Uh, but um, so for larger events um, with Vendheim, will you will have, you will still be bidding on on kingdom wide events as well. So arts and oh, yeah. sciences, crowns, coronations. There might be even a chance where you would double up or do you want to work? Would you like the principality um, calendar coordinator to work with the kingdom calendar coordinator. So, so there's a little bit more parity or do you want to There'll take be, it? All? They will have to work together on that. Some, uh, the kingdom events, a lot of those kingdom events will need to stay as just kingdom. the principality will have to come up with some of their own events. Um, the, uh, the venues we've got venues in Oklahoma that will, that will handle large gatherings. Um, we just had uh, Anstior's uh, 40th, uh, September of 2019. We had over 800 people there, and we didn't even use half the site. Uh, it could, it's, it's a very large location. We could easily have a couple thousand people there and not run out of room. And it has a, we built a small fort there as well. Uh, not quite as big as uh, what's it go for, but it's a nice size fort uh, for our for our purposes. Um, but yeah, it'll have to be. They'll have a lot of their own events uh, both ways, and but we will be bidding on some of those events and and trying to have some of the crown attorneys up here, and some will be down south, of course. Uh, there is it is set up to where the. If you win coronet, you are not allowed to enter crown tourney. So that just makes sense. That's yeah. perfect. But you if, know, there might be a person who would try to do it. So it's always good to have it in writing. <laughs> good to have it in writing. So it's it's just set up. Nope, can't do it. If you win, if you win the coronet, you just bowed out of crown tourney. Now the the last question that I have was once again it's it's um one of uh one of the ones that was sent to me um, this last week when they found out who our guest was going to be. Um, so uh, when Anstior started itself, there were, I think, seven or eight kingdoms in the known world. And now, oh, seven. We, have, and now we have 20. So it, Jonathan and, and Willow coming in from, at, I think he had just stepped down as, as a crown in Aidenvelt. Uh, when he became the first king, where they be hmm. now we got twenty folks, uh, twenty different kingdoms. Um, how? Hey Bjorn, can you hear me? We're we're having some sound issues from you, Bjorn. Okay, let me see what I can do. Uh, you want to just wrap on that? 
Yeah, we're just going to wrap on that because he's dealing with stuff. I know most of what he was asking. Okay, well, go for it. Okay, so uh, Anstior was the seventh kingdom in the SCA. Uh, it's the oldest kingdom that has never split, uh, has never created Prince Pally or anything. Uh, this is the first time for it. Um, so the other six kingdoms that were formed prior to Anstior have all split at least once. Uh, so Anstior is doing this for the first time. I like to think of this a little bit as if, uh, uh, you know, when a child grows up and moves out of the house, there's always um, some heartache. Uh, there's good and there's bad as uh, mom and dad, you know, Aunt Stewart is uh, moving out or they're staying there, kids <laughs> moving out. It's kind of like, you know, they're kind of glad to see him leave maybe, but they're also, you know, because, you know, you want to see your children grow and prosper, but at the same time, you're also sad because they're not going to necessarily be there all the time. Uh, so there is, there will be some growing pains and some separation pains. Uh, I'm hoping that those will not be severe and that uh, uh, it works out to where everyone works well together. Um, and that, uh, you know, there's, there's not any problems. Do we have I your sound back I, I do. I hope, I hope you can hear me now. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's, that's why I have backups folks. Uh, well, thank you so very much, your excellency. I really appreciate the answer to that. Um, and, uh, I'm really looking forward to coming out and visiting one of these days. I'm pretty sure, uh, Laertes is as well. Um, it's, it's going to be a wonderful time to see what Vindheim does. And I, I'm just so very uh, happy for you all to continue to grow and thrive, especially coming off the year we just came off of. And thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening. Thank you. I was glad to be here. And you're welcome to come out on, on December 11th for the Cornet Attorney and watch. And uh, if you're coming out, let me know, and I'll make sure to uh, have a hospitality something set up for you. <laughs> well, you're you're not done with this. Yeah, you're just done with him. Oh, so okay, uh, okay. So I'll make this quick. Is uh, it is that time? Well, first, before we, we do the the trivia game, I just want to thank everyone involved with your principality for not starting it with an A. I get kadoos on that. Um, and I did get the Herald to say it correctly, Vinheim. Well, there you go. Put up in so, and then he converted it over by the end. <laughs> you know what? Peer pressure. Um, so, so, um, uh, hey, Bjorn, what's the name of our game tonight? The name of the game this evening is They Call the Vind Mariah. Yes, that's right. So, um, you know, there are many different words for different types of wind across the, across the world. So I, I have a little test, and you just need to tell me if the term I'm giving you is a, is a name for a type of wind or it's a body part. So, so you're good? You got a 50-50 chance. <laughs> okay, so if wind okay. or a body part. Well, we'll, we'll start with one. Uh, Sirocco. Wind. That is correct. That is a, a hot, dry, dusty wind that moves the air from the Sahara into Northern Africa and Italy, in, ca in case you're wondering. Uh, how about uh, uh, Ghibli? Body part. Ghibli. Body part. No, it's a wind. That's what they call the Sirocco in Libya. So just, oh. just, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. My Libyan is a little rusty. Well, it happens. Um, how about a uh, uh, dewlap? Is wind or body part? Dewlap? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go wind. <laughs> so many comments to that. Um, uh, no, actually, it's a body part. And it's 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 the little chick, it's the little turkey neck thing people get when they get it's that's your dewlap. There you go. Oh, okay. Who knew? Uh how about uh uh how about schlock? Body part of wind. Schlock. schlock. Wind. That is correct. That's what they call the Sirocco and Malta, actually. Um 
How about um, a hallux? The hallux. Is that a wind or a body part? Mm -hmm. Body part. That is correct. You know what it is? Uh, ear canal or oh. let's do it. The yeah, super close. It's your big toe. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, I, it was real close. <laughs> real close. Um, Bora. Bora? Bora. I would say wind. That is correct. It's a cold, very strong, dry wind on the coast of the Adriatic Sea. So, uh, oh, willy willy, body part or wind? Willy willy? Yeah, I just wanted to see you say it for one thing, but willy willy. <laughs> uh, I'm wind. It is. It's a local whirling wind in Australia. Um, uh, two more. Um, okay. Um, gal pin, gal pin, wind or body? Gal pin. Mm hmm. Hmm. Body part. Yeah, it's actually an old Norse word for that little cup shape you make when you put your hands and put your hands in a cup. That's a gal pin. So, yeah, there you go. See, you can impress your friends. Uh, how about last one? Uh, a willy -wah. A willy wah? Willy wah. Wind. <laughs> you are correct. It's a stormy cold wind that blows down the mountains in Alaska. So you can say that willy wah makes my, <laughs> I can't even go there. Um, <laughs> all right. So thank you so much. Um, man, this is fascinating. And I, you know, as a, as a former Onstiorn, I, I would hope that my, former kingdom mates are looking at this as an exciting opportunity, something new. What, what a great thing to do to help build and recognize part of the kingdom and, and just keep it going. And I, I, for one, am excited for all the work, you know, that everyone on the committee and in that region must have put in to make this happen. And uh, the support that's coming from the crown it, it, it's going to be great to watch from out here. I don't know if I'll be able to make it out. Thank you for your invite. But, um, man, it just sounds so cool. And, um, again, thank you for your time today. I, I, and, I'm putting up with the technical issue we had at the top. But um, thanks again. It was great talking to you and meeting thank you. Thank you very much. It was an honor to meet you. Uh, well, thank you. And uh, we'll hopefully see each other in person after things turn back to a little more normal. So have a great rest of your evening. It was great meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Man, I didn't realize I was going to have that many technical issues myself. I just wanted to see him say "willy willy" was the whole thing. So, and he said it was such a plum. Really I know. So well, that's great. I mean, it's, it's fascinating for me because as long as, as I've been in the SCA, oof, um, just watching the process and. And, and, and the amount of work that it took and time to make it happen and, and just to watch it go through, it's pretty cool for me. So, you yeah. know. Right before I left Meridies to move to Kaid, they had just started the process of principality and it was still called the Western region. And it didn't technically get the name of Glenavon until after I'd already moved here. So I saw the very vestigial process begin, but I really had no part of it other than just wishing them well and I'm so glad that uh, that now I'll say it. I'll say it as a as a bard. Windheim um, <laughs> su succeeds and thrives. Right. Well, I imagine they had a lot of uh, willy willy from the western regions back in the day too. Um, I just like watching the reactions down below. Uh, so speaking of which, we've had a very patient, super patient uh, bard waiting for us. Um, who do we have coming up? We have the principal bard of Avacal with us. Uh, her ladyship, Maeve Polsterper, and she is a fantastic person. Um, and we're very fortunate to have her with us. And so a patient person for having held on so long, uh, being as she's up there in Canada. Oh, they have electricity at night up there, don't they? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> so she'll be here right about... Now, oh, hello. Hi. Uh, how are you? 
I'm all right. I I noticed quite a few little jabs towards both Canada and Avacol through your show. Oh, no. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, opinions expressed by me are no way reflect <laughs> upon the crown of Plaid. Um Oh, it's all in good fun. I mean. Of course. It's fine. Um, but um, so uh, where are you in Avacol? Both within the SCA and, you know, if I was to look on a map. So I live in the incipient shire of Arisgard. So, you know, many, many similar feelings to the incipient principality there, uh, which is, so if you look at a map of BC, the easiest way for me to tell this, uh, the very bottom toe sticks out and we live in that toe. So we are in the wrong time zone from the rest of our province and and far, far west from the rest of Avon. So you, you live in the Hallux of BC. Right. See, <laughs> you've used a term from today. Um, and how long have you been in the SCA? Um, I've been in the SCA for about seventeen years. I want to oh, say. Yeah. And and were you brought in by the opportunity to perform Bard, or what? What kind of? No, you? not originally. Um, so the the. The Shire I used to be a part of is, is a very teeny tiny Shire that has unfortunately since folded into Tirpanog, but very, very North Tiri in Ontir. And uh, there's not a lot that goes on that the rest of the city isn't gonna see. So I remember instances of, of SCA signs this way, having no idea what they meant. But when I finally got to go to an event, um, I had fallen in with just the right group of friends. There were two teachers at my high school who were also a part of the SCA. And I was like, medieval stuff. I've seen you guys all over the place. I had no idea how to contact you. I was very excited and uh, finally got to go to my first event. It was this teeny tiny little thing. I had a great time. I met people who became family immediately to me. And yeah, I, I've been deeply involved ever since. That's cool. So um, you're the premier bard of Avacol. So is there a competition? Is that, how, how does that work? No, they just handed it to me and said, yeah, you're a cool cool person. It's fine. No. Oh, um, it's Canada. That's how it works, right? <laughs> yes, there was there was a competition. Um, it was made extra difficult because we were given about two months notice total. Um, However, you had to have your intent to vie, including what you were going to perform in a month before that, or a month a month before the, the time date. So uh, a month to get your stuff together and get to the competition. And yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a lot of fun, but a lot of stress. Now, was this the pre-COVID time and you've been doing it for a while or did this happen yes. during COVID? So uh, the, Competition was held the September before the pandemic. And I was actually supposed to step down about a month after pandemic started because oh. our kingdom decided that they wanted the Bardic Championship to align with the Arts and Sciences Championship and be held at the same time. However, that was not September. So they decided to move it to May and then COVID happened. <laughs> So, yeah, well, at least it's not a lot of traveling involved, um, right? So, you got, look at that. So, I did a lot of traveling for my championship before the pandemic happened. Oh, okay. Kind of <laughs> jammed it all together then. Um, but uh, so, when you perform, uh, do you normally do stuff that you've written or, or worked on or is it other pieces what do you what do you prefer actually uh, i usually do pieces other people have have written um i'm really good with words but my brain gets caught up in the mechanics of trying to fit words to music or to verse so if i don't need to do that i can i can word for days um but as soon as you need me to fit it into a mechanic my brain just kind of blue screens right uh so <laughs> I like pieces um, that speak to me. I, I, for me, singing and performing is is very emotionally attached, and so it. If I'm going to perform a piece by myself, it has to at least move me in some way. 
um, if I'm just joining in, um, it's the camaraderie that moves me to join in. And that's, I'll, if I know the words, I will. And um, just one last thing, and I know it's getting late, but um, so as for the upcoming uh, Bardic War, uh, I understand you're the, uh, the West Alliance um, ringleader. Organizer. Yes, organizer. That's the word I want. Um, so uh, that's coming up the, the, the 15th of May. Yep. Uh, I, I, I will say, uh, just in fairness, that we've had the, the generals for both the Eastern Alliance and the Central Alliance, yep. and they may have just talked smack about everyone else. You know, so, I, I actually saw. I went back and watched, and I saw what words they said. You know what? I like to believe that uh, we're above that kind of smack talk here in the winning alliance. I mean, the Western Alliance. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I would, I would, I, I, I appreciate your fairness and open mindedness. Of you know, it's all in good fun. Exactly. Um, so for this evening, I understand you're going to perform two pieces for us. You want to tell us about the first one? Yes. So, um, as as the Kingdom Bardic champion, I feel it's my duty to at least once uh, perform Ra Ra Avakal songs because Ra Ra Avakal. Yeah. Um, this <laughs> this piece has been considered by a lot of people to be our anthem. Um, there are a few, but this one tends to get sung most often. Um, and it is by one of our wonderful, incredible members, uh, Adis Alf's daughter, also known as Anise Bradburden. I probably butchered the last name, and I'm sorry, Adis. I love you anyways. <laughs> um, it's called Avacal Together We Conquer, which is oh. our go-to phrase motto thing. Awesome. Well, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. See the dawn on the rise, battle line we draw again. A challenge on our border must be met with blood and pain. Gather up your forces, defend your sovereign's reign. Have a cow, together we conquer. We will fight, we will die, we will do what must be done. We will leave our fields of plenty, lose our brothers one by one. Our children raised in battle, daughter as strong as son. Have a cow, together we conquer. Through the smoke and the haze, blade and arrow, new blood kissed. The enemy is weeping for their loved ones sorely missed. No traitors and no cowards, we grace the Valkyries list. Have a cow, together we conquer. We will fight, we will die, we will do what must be done. We will leave our fields of plenty, lose our brothers one by one. Our children raised in battle, daughter as strong as son. Have a cow, together we conquer. Tempered steel, how it shines through the slaughter, hear it sing. We will fight until the last man for the glory that we bring. Squired by our fathers, knighted by our king. Avacal, together we conquer. We will fight, we will die, we will do what must be done. We will leave our fields of plenty, lose our brothers one by one. Our children raised in battle, daughter as strong as son. Avacal, together we conquer. Now the sun starts to set and the battle comes to close. Living men, our brothers, shut our eyes from feasting crows. No regrets or grieving, this is the death we chose. Avacal, together we conquer. We will fight, we will die, we will do what must be done. We will leave our fields of plenty, lose our brothers one by one. Our children raised in battle, daughter as strong as son. Avacal, together we conquer. Avacal. Together we conquer. Wow, that was awesome. Very <laughs> rousing. <laughs> Very cool, my goodness. Um, and you have a second song for us tonight? I do, and it's much softer and prettier and sweet. Oh, it's about me. No. Uh, so you want to tell us about that one? Yes, um, this piece is one that's uh, slowly been passed from kingdom to kingdom because I learned it when I was down at an event in Ontier from a dear friend of mine who moved there. Um, but it's originally by Sir Colin McLear of the Kingdom of the West, and it's called Children's Inspiration, and it's, it's one of my favorites. Oh, well, great. Well, I look forward to it. Uh, the floor is yours. <laughs> Children come to the tourney, their hearts open wide, Juvia chivalry, valor, 
displayed side by side, knowing nothing of politics, rank or degree, inspired by the nights that they see. For a child knows no night by the armor he wears, nor his spurs, nor the chain of the burdens he bears, nor the hue of his belt, I but times that misleads. A child knows a night by his deeds. With the power of legends, their minds are a world of Lancelot, Roland, Huntington's Earl. William the Marshal, Richard of the Lee, they're heroes we can each of us be. For a child knows no knight by the armor she wears, nor her spurs, nor the chain of the burdens she bears, nor the hue of her belt, I but times that misleads. A child knows a knight by her deed. So salute you, your consort, your foe, and the crown with bravery and honor when highest renown. Be you peer of the realm, be you newly made squire. Yours is the power to inspire. For a child knows no night by the armor they wear nor their spurs, nor the chain of the burdens they bear, nor the hue of their belt, I but times that misleads. A child knows a knight by their deeds. Yes, a child knows a knight by their deeds. Wow. That was that's very touching. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And what, and what a broad range of performance. <laughs> oh I can make you angry or make you sad. Yeah, I reminds me of some relationships. Anyway, uh, let's bring Bjorn in and see what he has to say. Hey, Bjorn. It was lovely as always. Uh, you're, you're, I've been told about your voice, and uh, I'm so very happy that you were able to, to share it with us. Um, since we are, I mean, we're part of the the Western. Uh, yes, I'm very excited to have such strong allies with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. But thank you so very much for sharing your gift with us this evening, and for your patience with all of the the uh, technical and whatnot that was happening. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, and uh, you know, be sure to look at the comments after the show. Lots of nice things being said. It was lovely performance. Amazing to meet you. And uh, I have a question for you guys before I go. I don't think that works that way. Does it work that way? I feel like no. this works this way. <laughs> I guess we can try something different. So you don't have to answer right now, uh, but we would like to uh, ask you if you would consider being on Griffin Eye News uh, as as people answering the questions instead of asking the questions. I, I, I don't know if I could do that. I could try. I mean, because <laughs> everyone knows I have a tough time talking about myself. So, you know, oof. That's fair. That's fair. You have time to consider, but I just wanted to ask the question so that everybody knows the question's been asked. No, that's awesome. It's, certainly. I mean, I, I can't speak for Bjorn, but yes. It would be my honor. And so, great. Well, we'll talk about it off air. So, Wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. We look forward to you leading the troops to a successful campaign in Bardic War. And it was, a, what an amazing performance tonight. Thank you thank very much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank have, you a, really. have a great evening. Oh, that, what a lovely voice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, on that first one for the uh, Abacolf kind of fight song that they had, I guess she couldn't rhyme uh, logger or moose because uh, you would think that it would it would be in that song for Abacolf. Uh, I, I, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, you're not going to commit because we're going to be on that show and she's going to give me crap for just saying that. Um uh, one, of us, one of us has to be the decorous one. So would you just call? Oh, got it. Um, so uh, one last announcement before we go. Just a reminder that this Saturday, for those in Kaid and beyond, the Altavia anniversary virtual an anniversary is going. Man, do you think I'd be able to say that? The Altavia virtual anniversary is happening this Saturday. Go to the Barony of Altavia. Facebook page along with the the page that's for the event. There'll be lots of fun. 
And um, I think that's all I got. You got anything? What, what, what do we have next week for the well, party for? We still have um, uh, uh, Lady Lila, who um, is the other co-event steward for the Bardic War, uh, and who was a former bard of Kaid before she moved to the East uh, Kingdom, uh, was slated, but she's still a little under the weather. So we're trying to figure out one of the other generals or one of the other commanders in the Bardic War to come on in the next week. But um, but Layla, is, she's she's bound and determined to to uh, perform with us before the war it's proper and uh, i'm just wishing her all the vocal health and expediency for recovery right because we're we're culminating to that big week of bardic war coming up so uh, keep joining in and keep watching i actually i i've just been told by uh her excellency karina who i had the good fortune to be her queen's champion for rapier uh that i have to do uh the show she just ordered so uh, I'm always in her service. So uh, now it is not a choice. Yeah, I, I see that apparently, even though I'm her laurel, she's telling me I must say yes. I mean, technically, well, not technically, she does outrank me. So yeah, yeah I, I guess I guess I'm going too. Well, there we, there we go. Now I might pull in rank. Well, anyway, Bjorn, it was great to see you, my friend. Uh, Good to I, see you again. I, I felt like I just saw you yesterday, but again, what a great time. I was, it was great seeing you. And um, you know what? Everyone else out there, thank you to our guests. But everyone else, man, I'm like all messed up right now. Um, thank you again. We look forward to seeing you next week. But once again, we will be live, live from, Kaid. from Kaid. We'll see you then. Have a good night.